बिनय न माने जल्द ही जड़ भय तीन दिन बीत बोले राम सकोप तब भय बिन होए न प्रीत फ्रॉम एशेज टू एशेज एंड फ्रॉम डस्ट टू डस्ट इफ थॉमो डोंट गेट या देन लिली श्योरली मस्ट द इंडियन नेवी डोमिनेंस दस इंश्योर दैट शुड वी चूज टू वी कैन स्ट्राइक एट विल ऑपरेशन सिंदूर इज ओवर होपफुली और एज द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट डिस्क्राइब्स इट एज एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग नॉट ए सीज फायर एग्रीमेंट ए लॉट हैज हैपन इन द पास्ट फ्यू डेज लॉट्स ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन डिस इन्फॉर्मेशन एंड स्लीपलेस नाइट्स इट्स टाइम वी एनालाइज द ऑपरेशन इन डिटेल इट्स गोल्स एंड द चेंजिंग पैराडाइम ऑफ मॉडर्न वारफेयर लेट्स डू एन ऑब्जेक्टिव एनालिसिस इन ए नॉइज फ्री डिस्पैशनेट मैनर हेलो गाइज आई एम सौरव एंड वेलकम टू द आर्क On the intervening night of 6th and 7th May from 105 to 130 AM Indian Armed Forces launched a tri-service military operation codenamed Operation Sindur. It targeted terrorist infrastructure in Pakistan and Pakistan occupied Jammu and Kashmir aiming to neutralize the operational capabilities of groups responsible for cross-border terrorism on Indian soil. The operation involved precision strikes targeting nine sites four in Pakistan and five in POJK linked to terrorist groups such as the LET JEM and the Hizbul Mujahideen the targeted sites included Murid K the LET headquarters and Bahawalpur the JEM headquarters India used loitering munitions and standoff cruise missiles to conduct these strikes. The Brahmos A supersonic cruise missiles from Su-30 MKI and Scalp EG from Rafals. The attack were so devastating that entire building complexes collapsed. Video evidence from Muridke and Bahawalpur show the destruction caused by the missiles. As per reports, multiple high-value targets were eliminated, which was evident from the number of senior Pakistan Army officers attending the funeral of these terrorists. Indian Army claims to have eliminated more than 100 terrorists in the operation. In this operation, India did not target any Pakistani military establishment. Before moving forward, let's take a little detour. Take a look at this satellite image of Bahawalpur. From the satellite image. It looks like three tiny dots on the roof. Now see the devastation caused here with these three tiny dots. Now compare this with Balakot air strike in February 2019. These are the satellite images taken post the Balakot air strike. Here also you can see three tiny dots on the roof. but the pakistani army cordoned off the entire area for more than a month post the strike so the actual damage of the compound could never be seen but you understand what i am trying to say here in the morning of 7th may pakistan claimed to have shot down five indian aircrafts including three rafals but did not provide any evidence to corroborate its claims indian media did report some crashes of air assets on the indian side of the border but despite the tall claims till date no conclusive evidence of any indian aircraft being shot down by pakistan has been found pakistan started heavy shelling on the loc in punch rajori kupwara targeting civilian areas leading to multiple civilian casualties indian army responded with heavy fire on pakistan army posts Pakistan also launched attack drones into India targeting Indian military installations starting from Avantipura and Srinagar in the north to Bhuj in the south the drones were engaged by Indian integrated counter UAS grid and were neutralized In the morning of 8th May India responded by attacking Pakistani air defense installations using attack drones it included Harrop attack drones Sky Striker loitering munitions and other attack UAVs. 
the drone attack was so severe that it positively took out Chinese HQ-9 SAMs in Lahore. In the evening, Pakistan launched an offensive using fighter aircraft and drones. Pakistan launched about 300 to 400 drones into India, targeting 26 locations from Leh to Sir Creek. The drones included Turkish origin Biker EH-3 Kamikaze drones, Asisgard Songar drones, and other Chinese drones. Pakistan also deployed its F-16 and JF-17 fighter aircraft, attacking Indian military targets. Indian air defense systems performed spectacularly well, intercepting the incoming drones and missiles. It included the Pechora, OSA AK, Beaufort's L-70 anti-aircraft guns, Spider, Akash, Barricade, MRSM and the S-400 systems. Notably the indigenous systems such as the Akash demonstrated stellar performance that night. The Integrated Air Command and Control System or IACCS of the Indian Air Force brought all these elements together demonstrating net-centric warfare capabilities. Most of the drones were intercepted and there were also reports of an F-16 and JF-17 being shot down by India. IAF did acknowledge shooting down a PAF aircraft, but the number and type could not be positively ascertained. In response to the drone attack by Pakistan on the night of 8th, India launched armed drones at four Pakistan air defense sites, destroying at least one. Drones were launched again by Pakistan in the evening of 9th and almost all were intercepted by India. On the intervening night of 9th and 10th, IAF launched a massive air attack targeting Pakistani air bases using standoff weapons. With the earlier drone attack by India, Pakistani air defense systems were already suppressed. With lots of chinks in Pakistan's AD armor, IAF launched Scalp, Brahmos A and Crystal Maze air-to-surface missiles with precision targeting of Pakistani air bases using Rafals, Su-30 MKI and Mirages. As per government reports, IAF bypassed and jammed the Chinese air defense systems and completed the mission in just 23 minutes. 11 PAF bases were attacked that day. It included Chaklala, Rafiki, Murid, Sukur, Sialkot, Pasrur, Chunya, Sargodha, Skardu, Bholari, and Jakobabad. By this time, the Pakistan military had realized that their air defense systems had completely collapsed. They had faced massive losses in terms of assets and personnel. They were left with hardly anything to counter the Indian attack except nuclear saber rattling. Finally, good sense prevailed and the Pakistan DGMO contacted his Indian counterpart and an understanding was reached. Then there was the US involvement and Trump's announcement. But let's just ignore that. In Balakot airstrike, we did hit the intended target with precision using Spice 2000 bombs. But due to some technical glitch, the Crystal Maze air-to-surface missiles could not be launched, which could have given us live feed of the bombing. Then the Pakistan army quickly cordoned off the area, preventing any exposure of damage to the outside world. So a clear battle damage assessment could not be done. But this time it was different. India launched cruise missiles and loitering munitions that almost flattened the buildings, causing severe damages. Secondly, this time the targets were right in the middle of population centers. So any damage on the buildings were clearly seen and captured by the local people. And hundreds of videos were uploaded on social media. But IAF very carefully selected the terrorist centers and chose the time of attack to attack the targets with pinpoint accuracy and yet minimize any collateral damage. Take a look at this graphic. India in phases hit multiple terrorist centers and Pakistani military bases 
during Operation Sindur. We have seen the videos of destruction of terrorist centers in the first phase of Operation Sindur. Now let's analyze the satellite imagery published by multiple independent agencies, confirming the significant damages IAF caused to PAF bases. News of Indian attack first came from Noor Khan base in Chaklala Rawalpindi. The base as you can see has multiple hardened aircraft shelters. It hosts PAF transport aircraft such as C-130 and the IL-78 refuelers. The attack holds much more significance than the physical damage it caused because it lies about 15 to 20 kilometers away from both the Pakistan Army's headquarters in Rawalpindi and the office of the country's Prime Minister in Islamabad and also a short distance away from the unit that oversees and protects Pakistan's nuclear arsenal. India struck in the heart of Pakistan. The satellite imagery suggests damage to a few buildings and long truck-like structures, which possibly was a mobile command and control center. The fire that engulfed the base could also be a result of aircraft fire as per estimates, but can't be independently verified. Next, Mushaf Air Base in Sargodha. Sargodha near Lahore is Pakistan's crown jewel. It houses Pakistan's F-16s and JF-17s. Here the IAF strike was on the runways. You can clearly see two craters on the runways. Yes, it can be repaired. But you have to understand that once your air defense is taken out by the enemy and in the second round of attack, your runways become unserviceable, it makes your entire air base and its assets, including fighter aircraft, vulnerable to enemy attack. Your fighter aircraft can't take off from here, making them sitting ducks. In short high tempo operations like this, it makes a huge difference. And the message was perfectly delivered to Pakistan. Next, let's take a look at Volari. Volari Air Base is about 120 kilometers away from Pakistan's port city of Karachi and is about 140 kilometers away from the international border with India. The air base has multiple HAS. The IAF attack had targeted the aircraft hangar in the air base with absolute precision. As you can see, the aircraft hangar is severely damaged in the attack. Whether there was any aircraft in the hangar at the time of attack can't be confirmed, but there is a very high possibility of a PF Saab Iria 2000AWNC being damaged in the attack. Similarly, there were significant damages to PF bases in Jacobabad, Sukur, Rahim Yar Khan, and others. You can see in the video how big a crater has been created right in the middle of the runway, rendering it unserviceable. Pakistan also claimed to have attacked Indian air bases and causing damages, but no satellite image has been released validating the claims. Many of Pakistan's claims have been fact-checked by independent analysts. I am just putting it here for brevity. Operation Sindur was a huge success and a clear-cut victory for India. It was a meticulously planned and executed tri-service operation. Indian Army, Navy and Air Force walked in impeccable sync, demonstrating jointness and integration of the three services and their systems to achieve the desired strategic objective. Giving further impetus to theaterization of armed forces in India So what did we achieve from the operation? 1. A new red line has been drawn. Any cross-border terror attack on India will now be responded militarily. Bharat par atanki hamla hua, to muh tod jabaab diya jayega. Koi bhi nuclear blackmail Bharat nahi saega. Nuclear blackmail ki aad mein panap rahe atanki thikano par 
भारत सटीक और निर्णायक प्रहार करेगा हम आतंक की सरपरस्त सरकार और आतंक के आकाओं को अलग अलग नहीं देखेंगे टू वी डिस्प्लेड रिमार्केबल टेक्नोलॉजिकल सुपीरियरिटी ऑफ आर डिफेंस सिस्टम्स। आपने देखा किस तरह के रैकेज यहाँ पे फोटोग्राफ हमने दिखाए हैं चाहे वो टर्किश ड्रोन्स हो या और कहीं के भी ड्रोन्स हो हमारे काउंटर यूएस सिस्टम्स हमारे ट्रेन एयर डिफेंस ऑपरेटर्स पूरी तरह सक्षम हैं और हमारी देश की जो इंडिजिनस कैपेबिलिटी है काउंटर यूएस के लिए उसने दिखा दिया है कि चाहे किसी भी तरह की टेक्नोलॉजी आ जाए हम उसको काउंटर करने के लिए तैयार हैं और मुझे बोलने की ज़्यादा ज़रूरत नहीं है आपने खुद ही अपनी आँखों से देखा है हमने इनका क्या हसर किया है वी ब्रिलियंटली डिफेंडेड आवर सेल्फ फ्रॉम एनिमीज अटैक and attacked the adversary crippling their defenses with sheer domination third our indigenous systems are now battle tested and they performed spectacularly well expect big orders from countries for our indigenous defense systems Four, with the operation, we have sent a clear message to our other adversary, China. Last but not the least, our political and military leadership managed the escalation ladder masterfully. It becomes extremely critical when the conflict is between two nuclear-armed countries. We controlled it perfectly and also achieved our desired objective. It's a big win for India, and for that, lots of gratitude to our armed forces. Jai Hind.